Welcome to WeLearn Virtual Learning Network. This is session number ninth of the subject, the study of society, and the chapter is agencies of socialization. The topics to be covered are agencies of socialization, differences in socialization, family, social class, and socialization, sex and gender identity, mass media, and socialization. Agencies of socialization: the child is socialized by several agencies and institutions in which he or she participates, his or her family, school, peer group, the neighborhood, the occupational group, and by the social class. So the child is basically socialized by the place where he or she works, the family, the friends, as well as the school, as well as the place where he or she lives. The position of the family in the social structure is determined by the social class, caste, religion, etc., and by the fact that the family lives in the rural or in the urban areas. So that is also characterized by where the family lives, whether in the rural or in the urban areas, or the family, social, caste, class, as well as the religion. Growing up. The socialization process in infancy and childhood is different from that during adulthood. There are various traditional Hindu rites or sanskars which divide childhood into several stages. These are namkarna, nishkarmana, annaprasna, chudakarana, or tonsure, vidyarambh, and upanyana. Religion and socialization. Difference in the socialization process and practices is noticeable among certain religious communities. In the villages, a significant section of people are continuing to wear their traditional dresses and can still be distinguished on the basis of these outward symbols. So, basically, in the villages, people can still be distinguished on the basis of their dressing sense. The emphasis on what constitutes a good Hindu or a good Muslim or a good Sikh or a good Christian also creates differences in the values and behavior of members of the larger society. Differences in socialization. A city-bred person who comes across a person from the village is likely to notice him or her because of the differences in their dress, speech, and their deportment. The way the person speaks, the way the person addressed the other person, as well as address. From there, uh, the person can distinguish whether a person is a city-bred or a rural person. The villager is recognizable not only by the outward symbols mentioned, but also by his or her values, norms, and behavioral patterns he or she upholds and considers. Appropriate. So the values and behavioral patterns are also noticeable in a person who comes from a, a rural area. The caste factor. The castes are divided on the basis of birth because people are born into them. You may be at least able to distinguish a Brahmin from a Harijan, or you may even be able to distinguish a blacksmith from a goldsmith or from a washerman. Within a village, there are likely to be subcultures, while the culture of a village itself may have something in common, which is shared by all its members and bind all the members together. The language or the dialect also tends to vary. The upper castes speak more refined and sophisticated form of the language than spoken by the lower castes. Similarly, there are differences in the dress that is considered appropriate or inappropriate for a particular caste. Again, the behavior that is considered proper by one caste may not be so considered by the other. So basically, the way one speaks the language, the dressing sense, also the language, also the behavior through which one is uh, express himself or herself, that is also a factor which is to be noticed. Socialization in tribes. The socialization process differs according to whether it occurs in a tribe or non-tribe. We shall give extracts or the socialization process a tribe called Muria, which inhabits the Bastar district of Madhya Pradesh in central India. There are tremendous variations in the socialization process among them as are in the non-tribal world. Other institutions, the Gotuls. Gotul for the Muryas is a center of social and religious life. It also assigns educational tasks among children. All unmarried Muria boys and girls from the age of five or six years are members of Ghotul. They sleep at night in the Ghotul and are directly responsible for its care and maintenance. During the day, they go to their parents' home and help them in various tasks. They leave the Ghotul after marriage. Family, social class, and socialization. These two dimensions are being taken together because family here includes not only the size, the composition, and the type, but the social position as well. The social position of a family is determined by caste, race, and social class, etc. So basically, on these types, the family is characterized and determined. The dimensions are the size, composition, and the type. Behavior and family. Family inculcates attitudes relating to proper behavior, decision making, and obedience to authority, etc. 
In addition, children learn the attitudes and skills necessary to play a role in the production and consumption of goods and services. So basically, family gives a lot of things: how to behave, how to pay obedience in decision making, and how to be good citizens. Through which the family, the child learns and inculcates values in himself or herself. Each family adopts division of labor regarding family tasks and prepares its young for the notion of work. E early socialization into economic roles also takes place within the family. So basically, when socialization process takes place, also the division of labor, the uh, division of tasks are also there, and also various attitudes and works are predefined. A number of studies have been undertaken on the effect of family background on the educational performance of the child, which are pertinent to socialization. One of the salient findings of these studies is the negative impact of a school on a child if he or she belongs to a working class home with little emphasis on cognitive achievement. So, where it is said that negative impact of a school is there on a child if he or she belongs to a working class home with very less emphasis on educational achievement or the achievement of the mind is there socialization and communication the importance of language and difference in the pattern of communication between parents and children according to social class are the other dimensions which have been studied by sociologists notable among them being bussel bernstein according to him patterns of language used in the teaching styles are class based he saw a relationship between social structure forms of speech and the subsequent regulation of behavior in the schools so basically he saw a relationship between speech regulation behavior behavior in the schools and social structure the language of the working class child is limited in the vocabulary while that of the middle class child does not suffer from this limitation the teacher is by and large from the middle class and can communicate better with the middle class child since they share the same linguistic code or language with its vocabulary meaning syntax etc the working class child cannot communicate as well with the teacher and begins with a handicap which affects him or her throughout his or her school career because of this restricted cooperation so basically a person or a child coming from a working class where both the parents are working and are not interacting with the child much that person has a limited way of speaking and limited way of interaction and also limited vocabulary and the whereas a person who comes from middle class with the parents interacting with the child then the child is able to develop the speech through which he can communicate properly school and socialization school is used here to refer to a whole range of formal educational institutions which are the characteristics of the contemporary industrial and industrializing urban complex societies the first is the formal context of the classroom wherein the content of socialization is determined by the textbooks and the cognitive aims of the processes of teaching so in the school inside the classroom the textbooks as well as the books that determine the cognitive aims of the process of teaching the second context is informal and can be perceived in the interpersonal relations of students with teachers and those among students so next is informal where relationship uh, between the students and as well as between the student and the teacher comes into forefront sex and gender identity Every society has a systematic way to deal with sex or gender roles. Every culture has a process by which it prepares the children to play the roles that society expects and requires of them as adults, and these roles vary according to sex, ethnicity, and social class, etc. It refers to the division between masculine and feminine roles, tasks, attributes, etc. So basically, gender is a society. created word and which defines the roles and responsibilities tasks and attributes between masculine and feminine uh, roles the success of socialization process is indicated by the studies which show that gender identity is the unchanging core of the personality formation and it's firmly established in the early stages of one's life anthropologists have given examples from different cultures to demonstrate variation in sex roles from one culture and society to another so basically it's all about gender identity in the agricultural society in africa women play considerably active role in the productive activities in spite of the stereotype of gender roles which exist in all societies in reality women may be participating equally in the so called masculine work such as agriculture unskilled work in factories etc in the same manner men quite often assist women folk in domestic work especially amongst the nuclear families in urban areas where both husband and wife work 
so basically where both husband and wife work in urban areas men help the women in the domestic work in the household work as well as the women in agricultural society in agriculture and farming help men uh, while doing these work in factories as well as helping them in the farming activities gender related studies systematic interest by social scientists in gender related studies has been very recent the most widely researched field is the socialization process which differentiates between men and women in almost all societies and produces what are called masculine and feminine roles images behavioral patterns and tasks it helps in producing stereotypes of male and female in many families they are discouraged to take subjects at a school which involve hard work or which are likely to lead to a career it may so even be be in families where sons are not doing as well as in studies they are, as are the daughters even then the sons will be encouraged to take up courses like science and other professional courses when parents can afford to spend only on the education of one child the chances are higher that the son will be sent for higher education instead of the daughter so where when when the parents can spend on one child the boy will be sent for higher education and not the daughter sexual discrimination this is discrimination based on the social expectation that a girl from the upper and the middle class will not be working even though a large number of them are working in the metropolitan cities these days since parents grandparents friends teachers etc are agents of socialization the situation is further complicated because it takes place within the home and is very personal so this is something this is something very personal and a lot of people have the mindset that the girls will not be working but these days the girls have started working in, in metropolitan cities mass media and socialization in contemporary societies the means of mass communication such as the books radio newspapers films or cinema records and video are very potent sources of socializing those who are either their readers or the listeners or the viewers these mass media especially the films the radio and the television simultaneously communicate the same message to a nationwide audience cutting across all boundaries so basically mass media radio internet newspapers films cinema records video these all are the sources of socializing and creating awareness amongst the people who are reading them who are viewing them or or even who are listening to them messages in mass media experts are arguing that this is not true in so far as the lower income strata are concerned since women in these strata always work to earn money to meet the basic necessities of life most studies on media conducted in other countries have either focused on television or have concluded that television is a predominant medium used by children although other important media still exist but television is one such medium which is which is famous which is popular among the children because it has the audio video, audio visual component impact of television television contacts the viewer directly through its message and does not involve social and interpersonal interaction it is embedded in another agency namely the family since it is generally viewed at home it can propagate values in contradiction to those rooted in a specific social context its message may also get distorted because a large proportion of the of our population is illiterate and lives in the rural areas while the programs are oriented to the urban viewer so basically sometimes the disadvantage can be that the programs or the rural people will not be able to relate to the programs and the concepts since it is made for the urban viewers and also it cuts across all boundaries and reaches to a large number of population in our country and it does not it does not basically involve social or inter interpersonal interaction but yes it contacts the viewer directly through its message so that was all about process of socialization the communication of the mass media the school the family the radio books and everything about uh, socialization so these are some of the questions you have to do it yourself question number 1 write a brief note on the major agencies that socialize a person and discuss briefly how socialization occurs in tribes thank you happy learning we learning